a scan tool. Oh wait, I know. There we go. Hey everyone, it's Tom with Fresh Vintage Garage. Today we're checking out a brand new line. We'd like to welcome X Tool to the Fresh Vintage Garage channel. Big shout out to them for sending all of this over and sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for sending these over. We're going to make a video on each one of these, including that's what's in here. This is the XT90. That's what's in this case right here. Specifically today, what we're checking out is the XT70W. You can see we have the big guy here. There's also an 80 and a 70 series. Uh, this is a 70W for wireless, which has the Bluetooth BCI, the dongle here. So looking at this, we were on Xtool's site, and I just wanted to show you before we actually open this, this has a bunch of features, uh, special functions as far as TPMS reset, oil light reset, kind of like stuff you'd expect to see on uh, a unit like this. And it has the usual suspects as well. When you go to diagnosis, it covers a ton of different cars, so very comprehensive coverage. And there's also immobilization. Now, I always say take that with a grain of salt, simply because every immobilization software that we've seen it's for specific vehicles so definitely check with xtool for your make and model for your vehicle and your situation to make sure it'll work for you what we're going to do to two things we're going to get this stuff off of here we're going to open this up and see what's inside and then we're going to go outside and uh, scan a car to see what's going on with it let's get started right now taking a look at the inside here i'm guessing we're going to have a case but we're going to find out right now Yep, there's our case. I'm just going to set this here. So let's pop this open. Now, I will say big shout out because a lot of these cases are okay. But, I mean, this one has a legit solid clasp on it here. Very nice. And we'll pop this open. So it feels like the scan tool is here. So we're going to look at that in just a minute. But paperwork. And we have the actual... Bluetooth, this is what makes it W, the wireless. So we'll be plugging that into the OBD2 port. I'll set that over there. And what do we have here? USB-A to USB-A cable. Not sure what that's for, but we'll find out. Here's our charger. And we have international for like European situations charging. And what else is in here? And another charger. That's not... 220 volt, but uh, it looks like another international charger. So let's open this up and actually look at the scan tool. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, let's take a look here. So first impressions here. Let me get it turned on. Beefy, chunky, in a good sense. Let me turn it on here, and definitely survive a drop. Nice firm grip here. While it's firing up, we have, what's on here? We have, so our USB-A. And that looks like all of the I.O. It does have a camera and a kickstand. Very nice just to sit there and, you know, work on while you're diagnosing stuff. It's interesting that there's a USB-A. So that's what that USB-A, if you stop and think, I want to plug this scan tool into a computer. What they did is they did a USB-A. That's in case you've never seen USB-A, that's a super common plug on a computer to another USB-A. So that's why we have this here. That makes a lot more sense. But uh, it's firing up. Take a look at it here in just a moment. There we go. Okay. So here is our scan tool. And looking at this, we're going to do a few things. We're going to get hooked up to the Wi-Fi. And then we're going to do any software updates, any firmware updates. So some quick tech specs on the XT70W here. You can see it's loading, and when this turns on, it automatically goes into the Xtool OBD2 like diagnostics app. Uh, what it's actually doing is loading an app on an Android 10-based tablet. So just to show you here, if you swipe up, you're actually going to get to a home button, and that takes you to the actual screen here. And one of my goals as we've uh, done more and more scan tool tests is to see if I can find Chrome and then get the Fresh Finish Garage. <laughs> and uh, we found Chrome. And so here's Fresh Finish Garage. Definitely make sure you like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. And uh, let's do a quick sound test on the actual uh, speakers. Let me just turn this down here. 
And let me jump ahead past some music. There we go. And then I'll turn this up. There we go. So not bad. If you're looking to uh, maybe do a little research, you got a code that this won't actually tell you exactly specifically what the data trouble code, like some kind of nuance about it. You have Chrome right there, a browser, just to do some quick internet searching to kind of dig into it a little bit more. But looking at the other specs here, this is, I believe, a 1.5 gigahertz processor, has two gigs of RAM. The uh, website said 64 ROM, R-O-M, so that's read-only memory. Forgive my, my nerdiness here, but uh, I'm guessing that's 64 gigabytes of memory, like, you know, actual hard drive space, so to speak. But um, basically an Android 10 tablet with the diagnostics sitting on top of it here. So we're going to take this and our appropriate uh, unit here, and we're going to go outside and uh, scan a car and see what's going on with it. Let's go do that right now. We are here in my 2005 Honda CRV, and we have the X tool hooked up. The OBD2 port's right down here. So being Bluetooth, it just hooked right there. And then if you look closely at the screen, you can see there's a little green symbol. So we do have connectivity here. Overall, looking at the screen, it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, real quick, this is a seven inch touch screen and there's a tech support if you do need to email them for any reason. But uh, a few of the smaller things, we were just in here looking at the updates and obviously there's plenty of updates to do, but we went in and we actually found Honda and updated that. And let's see what else is in here. So you can build a profile, like if you have a shop or something, you want to put that, put your actual profile email address and whatnot in. VCI management, I believe, yeah, that's where we connected to the VCI to get our little green uh, icon there. There is a, an endoscope here if you wanted to buy the endoscope or utilize it as a separate item. And then obviously the user's manual there. And this is reporting. So this is where you can actually do a diagnostic report using the data that you would uh, obtain in the auto scan here. And then the special functions, you can see there's a ton of stuff in here. And there's actually a lot of stuff in here, like there's ADOS support in here. That's a big, big deal. And to see that in here, because that's definitely an upcoming technology. But uh, all usual suspects, parking brake, oil reset, and what else is in here? Diesel particulate filter, if you have a diesel vehicle, and so on and so forth. So a lot of nice features to see in here, for, especially for your day-to-day, -day. if you're a heavier DIY uh, shade tree mechanic looking to like have a shop uh, level tool in the palm of your hand, this is definitely a good option. Uh, let's see, so the main function here, the main show, so to speak, is the obviously the code reading and the live data graphic. And we'll be right back. We're going to update the firmware in the actual VCI. There we go. Okay, so 99% of the time in the United States, you're going to have a 16-pin connector. And we're going to choose the U.S. And my guess is it's going to ask... Okay, so it didn't ask for the vehicle information, but let's see what this does. Okay, so it immediately auto VIN. That was impressive how fast that was. So you're making model and the VIN, and then we have ADOS calibration. This obviously does not have radar or anything in it because it's an 05, but if you have like a 2020, you may be in the ADOS calibration section. One other thing we're checking out here, and this is in a slightly different spot than where I would normally assume, uh, it says OBD2. And what we're actually looking for is the live data graphing, but knowing that this is the ISO 9141-2, we'll let that load up here. And then we'll be able to get into the live data graphing and see some of the readings coming off the car live. Okay, so do the fuel system status, engine coolant temp, engine RPM, relative. Okay, so it looks like this is where we're going to see our readings, and I was looking for a graph, but I'm guessing there's also a graph right 
Okay, so each individual graph is in the drop down here. So let me start the car. Let me go to engine RPM. We'll start the car here. Okay. Hey, there we go. And let me go up to engine coolant temperature. I don't know that we're going to see it rise at all, but uh, it might rise here in a minute or so. So we'll come back to that one. And what else do we have here? Relative throttle position. So let's take a look at that. So let me hit the gas a little bit. Yep, there we go. A nice feature to have and help you chase down some kind of like nuance that you're you know maybe you have a sensor going wonky or something like that but uh let me go back to the engine coolant temperature okay so yeah so uh, it's up to 114 degrees now so really nice to have the the functionality here and i just want to see okay so here's my customized one and i wonder if i hit graph oh look at that now that's cool so if you want to see something side by side to see if it's working correctly or maybe getting out of a spec, like factory spec, but let me hit the, uh, the gas here. It's interesting I'm not getting any fuel system status information, but everything else seems to be working here. And then if you wanted to record it, you could, so that you could actually show a customer and also a data export as well. So really nice feature to have there, especially seeing all of this side by side. And now I'm curious, I wonder, if I just come in and do a bunch of these here and then go to custom and graph. Okay, yeah, so it's giving me the ability to just scroll through them. So pretty powerful tool here. That's, uh, that's really nice to see. Let's go to automatic scan. And I'm not sure what hot system scan is. Let's see what that does here. Okay, so I'm guessing it's going to, yeah, it's starting already going through the different systems. And this is a pretty common comprehensive breakdown. It's going to communicate with every computer, every system in the car, depending on how your car is optioned, so that it gets a full comprehensive breakdown. It's basically building a report of what might be wrong with your vehicle. Uh, we're going to let this run and finish and then see what all comes up here. All right, so this just went through 57 systems that are pre-built into the uh, the XT70W here. And you can see I have some failures, as they call it, but uh, it went through everything from cameras to the different uh, like seatbelt stuff uh, to basically everything you can think of that might be in this car. Uh, let's look at, let me, if I do this. Okay, so this is telling me uh, SRS, so passenger airbag cutoff indicator is short. So what this is saying is in the SRS system, it's identifying in the passenger seat, there's a cutoff switch and it says there's a short. So maybe it's something as simple as I jam something under the seat and the, uh, the wiring is partially disconnected or something, or the wire could be cut or whatever, but I de definitely want to look at that. And let's see what else is in here. So this is saying Longitudinal accelerator, da, da, da. battery voltage failure high. I'm kind of wondering if the battery voltage is when I change the battery, which I did that almost two years ago at this point, but uh, I'll have to look into that as well. And then let's see what's in the engine itself. So catalyst system below. So P0420 is a really common like O2 sensor code. Uh, I will say seeing P430, that's starting to make me wonder if maybe the catalytic converter itself, if there's an issue, but um, I'll definitely have to look into that. And if I wanted to do a report, here's my report. And if I'm a shop owner, I touch one button and I can potentially send this to a customer if they came in and said, hey, I don't know what's wrong with my car, but the lights are on, I need help. Uh, this is a great way to click save. And then you can just save this as a report and let me get out of here. Uh, it won't let me get out of here. But so that'll actually give you the ability to quick generate a report and show the customer uh, what options you know they want to pursue as far as repairs. If I wanted to clear my data trouble codes, I could just push the button right there. And let me exit the automatic scan. Now all systems scan. 
it's going to do the same thing. So I will stop this, but you can see right here, it says 3 of 57, and then it'll go to 4 of 57. So it's scanning all of the same systems again. So jumping back into the auto scan here, I noticed the VIN up here, and we'll do that, and then you can manually input it, or you can just auto scan. So a really handy feature if you're looking for a quick VIN code. This will take a minute and uh, pop the VIN up here. And there's our VIN, and let me do this. And we already scanned, so what I wanted to look at in here, there were, there was an option, okay, so light truck. Obviously that's on China, but I wanna see what's in light truck. And I wanna go over to Europe and see what's, if light truck shows up. It does not, okay, so let's go to the Americas. This is definitely a question that some like shops, like heavier commercial shops are going to have, like what trucks it can actually do. And looking at this, I just wanted to quickly jump in here and see manual selection. Let's do like 2016 Dodge Sprinter. Let's see if I can find a Sprinter in here. So, I mean, there's 3,500, but that's a pretty common, that's not actually the right chassis. Let's see, Chrysler. 2016, and I'm not seeing it. So there may be Sprinter software in here. Let me go to Asia and see what we have. So definitely keep that in mind if you have a commercial shop, if you're running heavier trucks, one ton trucks all day, and you're, you're actually repairing them you may want to just spot check with Xtool to, to find your specific vehicle. But you can see the coverage is very comprehensive in here, whether, you know, no matter what region of the world you're in. So real quick, uh, we looked at this earlier in the video, but there's everything from utilizing the camera there to there's a file explorer and so on and so forth. Chrome, I was watching one of our uh, Fresh Vintage videos on Chrome earlier there, but Honestly, this is a tablet with the diagnostic software in it. Um, it's fairly quick. It does hang once in a while, but um, overall, solid unit. And wrapping things up here, you know, decent little unit, um, you know, solid. It definitely survive a fall and uh, comprehensive coverage. Great to have that camera on the back if you want to, hey, this is broken or that's broken kind of thing. But uh, definitely check it out. We'll leave a link to this for this actual unit on Xtool's site in the description for the video you're watching right here. And uh, with that, if you like scan tools, if you like shop equipment, if you like talk and shop and how to keep your cars fixed up and certified fresh, Fresh Finish Garage is your channel. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.